Hi guys, this is GSM from Dotcom and I'm here with the fresh Motorola H50 Pro. It's somewhere between a high mid-range and a flagship. It debuted in Morocco, in Marrakesh, and we have some interesting photos of that for you. We actually took quite a few photos with this handset here. It has a 3x optical zoom camera and uh, so much more going for it, um, including the beautiful design, which now has purple leather at the backside and a very discreet camera module. We have a big screen which is very bright and one of the fastest charges on the market, that's for sure. Here are the beautiful camera samples we've taken in Marrakesh um, from a balloon flight uh, with food and a lot more things. One of the biggest galleries we've ever taken. Now the phone itself has a Snapdragon 7 Gen 3 processor, which so is closer to our mid-range rather than a flagship, and it has one of the fastest charges on the market at 125 watts. And now let's start the review. So, Motorola Edge 50 Pro, it has a more grown-up design, with lots of curvature, which stands for elegance, and uh, Pantone versions, which will definitely steal your looks. Uh, it's also one of the lightest phones on the market and one of the slimmest, it's actually 0.4mm slimmer than its predecessor, uh, it's basically at around 8.2mm, um, and it weighs a very decent 186 grams. The battery dropped by only 100mAh, it's a very beautiful phone, but the curves are definitely not friendly with the gamers. Edge definitely means, well, curved screen and also a gently curved backside. We have a flat frame, glass at the front and the vegan leather at the backside in purple. Uh, it has a violet um, frame here in the lavender version and a silver one in the moonlight pearl version. And there's a third option, it's called Black Beauty with a back uh, covered with echo leather. It's definitely a premium phone, it's very easy to handle and has a pretty big aspect ratio, excuse me, screen to body ratio, 92% compared to the predecessor's 90.5%. It's only the fact that if you love curvatures, you love this, if you love a flat screen, you may not love this. And speaking of screen, the panel here is, well, just as curved, brighter and Pantone is certified now as the predecessors. We're dealing here with a 6.7 inch P-OLED panel, Full HD Plus resolution and for the gamers 144Hz refresh rate, HDR10 Plus and a promise of a brightness that can reach up to 2000 nits of brightness. Uh, and also we have a test video here which we can show you. Definitely an immersive panel with beautiful, beautiful colors. The curved edge is definitely for help with the immer immersion. You feel like it's going all the way up and all the way down the immersion here. We had wide view angles and an excellent contrast in the, even in the full sunlight of Morocco, which is quite a big deal because, well, it's desert in that country. Uh, not all of it, but quite a large part of it. Okay, so we measured the brightness and achieved 910 lux units, which means it's above the likes of the Redmi Note 12 Pro Plus, Motorola H40 Neo, or even the Nothing Phone 2A and Galaxy S22. It's pretty much the equal of the Xiaomi 13 Ultra, and uh, it's only just a few lux below the Vivo X90 Pro. Now, among the novelties that this uh, Motorola phone brings, we have here some display options. Aside from the brightness, dark theme, we have the colors, which can be natural, radiant, vivid, and also there's a color temperature setup here. Display refresh rate, full screen, edge lights, night light, flicker prevention, screen recording, and well, these are the features which we have here. So yeah, I should mention that um, the natural colors which we have here are now Pantone certified, which is something you don't see on any other phones. Now we move further and we go inside the phone where I think we should actually show you the IDA app to get an idea of the brand new CPU, the Qualcomm Snapdragon 7 Gen 3. Okay, so this is it, Qualcomm Snapdragon uh, 7 Gen 3, available here. Quite a powerful CPU, uh, it's one of the most powerful Snapdragon 7 series chipsets, it can even compete with previous gen uh, Snapdragon 8 series chipsets. It's accompanied by, as you can see here, 12 gigs of RAM and uh, up to uh, 512 gigabytes of storage, which makes it pretty potent. Um, this is basically one of the most powerful versions. There's no micro SD, just so you know. And uh, the last year model have UFS 4.0. And uh, here we should have a similar type of storage. Now, let's talk about the tests. Now, first of all, we usually like to do a CPU throttling test and reveal what happened there. Uh, okay, so let's see if we got a capture of this. Oh. Okay, the photos are here, we got the library here, we got the screenshots, and let's see. We lost only 8% performance in 15 minutes, so definitely no throttling, which is always good news. And now we skip straight to the benchmarks to see how we did. First up, Antutu 10. 
quite the impressive performance here, beating the likes of the Galaxy A55, Honor Magic VS, but um, the 830k points mean also beating the Honor 90 and nothing from 2A. It's 22nd placed and above it we have the OnePlus Nord 3 and um, some other flagships. Now, uh, keep in mind the Motorola H40 Pro had 1.2 million points, but the benchmark was different back then. Now, in Geekbench 6 in the multi-core, we're above Honor 90 and Galaxy A35, not a very flattering company, those are clearly mid-rangers, and the OnePlus Nord 3 is superior once again. So, yes, uh, it does feel like it's more of a mid-ranger than a flagship if you look at these benchmarks. In 3D Mark Slingshot Extreme Unlimited, we beat the Galaxy A55 again, the iPhone 13 Pro, but we scored below the, mo below the Motorola H40 and OnePlus Nord 3, and Galaxy S20 Fan Edition. So, this confirms it's actually a mid-range phone, more than a flagship or flagship replacement. After 15 minutes of live gaming, well, these are the temperatures we achieved. 34.3 degrees Celsius, so there's no overheating. Meanwhile, in benchmarks, 37.9, a bit higher, but still not overheating. When it comes to the battery, uh, usually Motorola phones somehow have small batteries, but deliver long battery lives. 4,500 mAh, that's what we're getting here. It's just 100 mAh less than the predecessor. The impressive thing is that we have a 125 watt charging with a bundle adapter. That's quite the boost. We also have wireless charging with 50 watts instead of 15 like the predecessor. And even reverse wireless charging. And now as far as the tests are concerned, let me just start with the video playback, which is uh, 18 hours. Not bad, to be honest. Although I've seen plenty of phones go past the 20 hour mark. It's just a notch above the Motorola Razr 40, Moto G53 and the first OnePlus Nord. Immediately above it you can find the Xperia 5 Mark IV which is a flagship so yeah. I mean we are doing fine but nowadays you can see a lot of uh, uh, Realme phones and a lot of Oppo phones reaching similar values at even lower price points. So yeah OnePlus Nord 3 still above it and uh, Xiaomi 12 and Moto G54 so quite a few phones above it. While below it well we can find some flagships of course, and also some mid-rangers. It's a mixed bag, still quite good. When it comes to the video, excuse me, to the continuous usage, 12 hours and 17 minutes, once again, expect it just a bit more. It's above nothing phone one, Galaxy Z Fold 4, Huawei Nova 9, but we're surpassed by the Motorola Moto G54 Power, regular G54, and even the Pixel 8 Pro, which is definitely not a champion. Keep in mind the um, predecessor Motorola H40 Pro was superior with 13 hours and 45 minutes. And with this value here, let's see where we're placed. So uh, 12 hours and 17 minutes, which means we're below the Realme C55, also below the Pixel 8 Pro, as I said before, uh, Poco X4 GT and um, quite a few Redmi's and mid-range Samsung phones and the Realme GT3 which is a solid mid-ranger even now. It compensates all of this with the fast charging, keep in mind it only requires 26 minutes to go from 0 to 100%. In 5 minutes you're at 21% and in 15 minutes at 60% which is pretty amazing if you plan on, well, doing traveling. Now, this has been the battery, let's talk about the acoustics, we have a stereo setup here, this is the bottom speaker, and we don't have a top speaker here, we have the earpiece, which is this one here. You can see the mention of Dolby Atmos here, and as usual, inside the Moto app should be able to do some tuning. Uh, there's a new interface, by the way, it uh, has a new look, a more, I would say, minimalistic look, compared to the one before. This is Dolby Atmos, you can make some adjustments, you have landscape stereo, which changed the way the sound, well, sounds when you rotate the phone. And these are the options. We have spatial audio, smart audio, music, movie, game, podcast, and custom. You can tweak the experience from here with this graphic equalizer, add some extra treble, bass boost, or vocal boost, surround virtualizer, and volume leveler. Okay, so that's about it. And now I think it's time to listen to some tunes. Uh, the button speaker is doing the heavy lifting for sure, the uh, top one doesn't make much of a difference. I'm actually quite impressed by what we achieved here. Um, other things we're mentioning, uh, there's no distortion for sure and the voice are pretty clear. I mean, the volume is no record breaker, it's sufficient enough for me, for a small room. Depends what you want from it and where you're going to use it. When it comes to the volume power, we are treated to 77.5 decibels at the top and 84 at the bottom, which is quite the difference. Um, okay, so yeah. Keep that in mind. Um, let's see what we surpassed here. I feel that the speakers are not as well balanced as the ones that we had with the predecessor. So you should probably remember that the balance is not there. The bottom one is much more powerful than the 
uh, top one. We surpassed the likes of the ROG Phone 5 Pro, um, also older phones you can see here, also the Razer 40 Ultra we surpassed, that's pretty important, and um, under Magic 4 Lite, we're not in select company for sure, it's not a very high value, but I think we actually surpassed the Galaxy S24 Ultra, which should count for some people, even though it's not a very loud phone. We're below quite a few other handsets here, including mid-rangers, OnePlus Nord 3 appears again, I keep comparing those two, and Honor Magic 5 Lite. When it comes to gaming, 93.6 decibels, we usually require 100 and I expect it more here, as I said before. It's better than a Galaxy Z Flip from the first generation, but it's way below the Asus ROG phones and it's 107 decibels. You can see here um, some of the values we're competing against and I have to really scroll to reach them. So yeah, Beats Z Flip, Motorola older phones, Huawei Nova 10 Pro, the Redmi 10, so basically a bunch of mid-rangers, but at the same time it also beats the Galaxy A54. There are Motorola phones that are higher, including some cheaper ones like the Moto G50, um, and um, a few more here. I see the Zenfone 10 is above it, the Huawei Nova 9 and the Xiaomi 14, plus Moto G34, which is definitely much cheaper. So expected more volume, but the sound itself is pleasant. And now let's talk about the cameras. Okay guys, so as far as the cameras are concerned, let me start off with the, well, selfie shooter. We have a 50 megapixel camera at the front here, cut in the screen. This one is a wide camera with autofocus, by the way, and it also has 4K capture at 30 frames per second. You can also do full HD at, well, 30 or 60 frames per second. If you go to the back side, we have a triple camera setup. And first of all, the main one is a 50 megapixel sensor with one f1.4 aperture. Uh, at the same time, it also has a laser focus, optical image stabilization, plus next up is a 10 megapixel camera telephoto with 3x optical zoom and its own flavor of uh, optical image stabilization. Finally, there's a 13 megapixel ultra wide camera with f2.2 aperture and 120 degree capture. It also has autofocus, which should help for Showing macro. Pictures that match. Which should have for macro, excuse me. Um, we have a LED flash here and a 4K 30 frames per second capture plus HDR10 plus. You can film in 10 bit with this phone and the stabilization is assisted by the gyroscope. There are quite a few options in the camera interface ranging from night vision to dual capture, long exposure dual capture video, spot color, full resolution 50 megapixel tilt shift spot color, scan panorama photo boot and time lapse. This is the uh, photo section. This is the portrait section and there's a pro mode here where you can set your exposure, ISO, white balance, shutter and focus. This is the photo once again with quite a few levels of zoom starting from macro to ultra wide 1, uh, 2 and 3x. Also we have here the image preference, you can choose auto enhance or natural depending on your needs and natural pops up again reminding me of the whole Pantone thing. This is the video area, we have the extra stabilization, no stabilization. This is the adaptive stabilization and finally this one horizon lock. The video is kept in a fixed orientation and the horizon is kept at all times fixed. We have nighttime video which is quite impressive and also slow motion. And now let's talk about the samples we took in Marrakesh, Morocco and also in Bucharest. Okay so first things first uh, we're going to talk about the uh, selfies. We have here quite a large gallery in the camera and uh, as you can see there are multiple photos. We've taken some in Bucharest, we've taken some in Morocco and uh, in various scenarios, including during the night. We have food photos, desert photos. So yes, quite a few. Okay, so first things first, the selfies. I have to say that um, for this type, we have uh, local shots and Morocco shots, but in all of them, I would say that the device did a pretty good job. These are some of the ones taken in Morocco. They're pretty expressive and detailed on account of the fact that, well, we have a very high resolution camera and it was to be expected. These are in the desert, in the more difficult conditions, as you can see here, and uh, the um, blur effect is pretty natural. Now let's try to find some more. Once again in the desert without glasses this time, and you can see the skin pores are very detailed. Actually some of the most details I've seen, and the focus is quite fine. Too bad for the, well, cloudy weather. Okay, even more selfies here. So all in all, I'm pretty impressed by the camera and uh, Bokeh does almost a perfect job. And uh, now I think it's time to go to other aspects like colors. Okay, so colors we have plenty and focus we also have plenty. Uh, if there aren't beautiful flowers in April, well, when else could you see them? 
Okay, so uh, when it comes to flowers, things are fine. And we also have a colorful fence, which we always rely on for our, I would say, color calibration. Speaking of which, this phone is on par with OnePlus when it comes to color calibration, which is, well, pretty accurate. Um, it's uh, just exactly as the human eye perceives them. Of course, even more beautiful colors were spotted in the desert and in various locations where we went to take photos, film and eat stuff. Like this one. When it comes to food photos, this phone is, well, pretty much an ace. Okay, so colors are spot on. Um, now we have the uh, daytime shots, regular shots and white shots. Uh, even the regular shots are pretty white, if you ask me. The angle is pretty generous and the ultra wide really catches a lot of things. And I don't see much deformation on the sides. Once again, it was a pretty cloudy day here. So I think it's time to skip back to Bucharest to get a sunnier day. Um, okay, this is where we tested the zoom. You can see for yourself things aren't that bad. But actually want to look for more ultra wide shots. Once again, these are zoom shots. This is the frame here. Okay, so let's maybe try to find one with actual ultra wide behavior. We have this one here. Once again, zoom shots. So this feels like a regular shot and this is the ultra wide shot. It catches a lot of scenery. I don't see any overexposure or oversaturation here. So the green hues are excellent. And I also don't see any deformation of the sides when you're taking those uh, ultra wide shots. That's always good news. Okay, so I would also have to say that when the sun is very shiny, uh, every once in a while you notice a slight, only slight degree of oversaturation, especially in the distance. I may have mentioned before the reason, but if you really look closely in the tree branches, there is just maybe a little bit. Okay, interestingly enough, when you do ultra wide shots, the oversaturation kind of disappears. And uh, then we go to the desert, where we actually photograph some camels. And these are actually beautiful scenarios. You can see more hues of yellow in the desert, which shows the prowess for the camera. Now let's talk about macros and close-up. As I said before, the ultra-wide camera has uh, a, uh, well, special um, focus mode, which allows us to take those beautiful shots. For example, we start with the faucet here, and we're going closer and closer. This is actually a pretty good macro. Next up, we have this, uh, I would say, metal bar here, metal rod. And then we started with the flowers. We got closer and closer and closer. I wouldn't call these macros, but rather close-ups. You really have to go this close for a proper macro, and I'm actually quite impressed. As I said before, usually we do better things with an ultra-wide camera with macro abilities compared to a dedicated 2-megapixel macro camera. Okay, and there's uh, also a uh, something here in Morocco like this noose here with an excellent texture. Texture is very well highlighted in macro shots. Now let's talk about the zoom. Okay, so if you stick to 3x, you should be happy. I actually did a bunch of tests here. So regular shot and we start zooming in and things are fine at 3x. But if you really start going past that, you're going to notice some grain and detail loss. Let's actually find more zoomed shots here because I'm sure we have them. Okay, so this is the regular shot and we zoomed in on this uh, store logo here. 3x is fine, but if you go past it once again, you notice some drop. Just 3x optical zoom doesn't feel like a lot these days, but they're probably keeping stuff for the ultra. Okay, and of course, uh, we had the whole balloon trip to zoom in. Okay, so um, hundreds of meters in altitude. We actually got to take some zoom shots. So let's also find those maybe. Okay, so this is the balloon trip. Setting it up, starting from here. And this is one of the most impressive shots I've taken with Morocco in the desert above everyone else. And you can see here, this is the regular level. And then we start zooming in. Colors are quite fine. Detail is not half bad, but you can clearly see here that we're starting to lose, um, I would say, sharpness once you really get zooming in. And uh, it feels more like a HD effort rather than full HD, so to say. So yeah, maybe an improved telephoto camera on the Ultra or on the other models. Okay, so um, we're really actually doing quite fine when it comes to portrait shows because we also have those and I'm not talking about regular portraits of people also objects with blurring the background behind this photo here even though it looks a bit more well fringed than it should be thanks to the processing but this is actually a good one and finally we should also have the food photos to dissect, dissect here okay so let's find those 
Sorry for the myriad of photos, but we do have some impressive things here. So if you're a food blogger or vlogger, this is an excellent range of textures, colors and details. Uh, we ate a lot of good stuff here. Um, there's almond cakes here, there's fruit, there's traditional desserts with cinnamon and so much more. This is the fruit. Uh, it actually fares better than the already excellent Realme 12 Pro Plus, which I recently tested with some strawberries and this is actually better. Okay, so uh, we also did some indoor shots um, in a cosmetic uh, area. This is an indoors event. It catches a decent amount of lighting. That's what I have to say here. So here we're indoor and taking some decent shots here. There's no problem with the lighting. It doesn't feel very dim and there is no detail loss. That's for sure. And this is a cosmetic preparation a workshop which we attended. Excellent focus and excellent indoor shots. Now let's talk about the low light. Okay, so it wouldn't be a trip to Morocco and Marrakesh if we didn't take a beautiful nighttime scenery set of shots. It's a very crowded town and uh, well, there's a lot to see. I wonder if uh, it's impressive because of itself or impressive because of the phone's camera, but it can definitely handle itself, it can definitely handle itself as a, well, tourist handset. It catches the atmosphere pretty well. However, you should really pay much attention to the focus and the quantity of light in the area you, areas you're at. Some more night shots here, in a restaurant, or close to the night, and also here, in a sort of resort with fireworks. Let's actually turn down the volume. So it definitely works as a phone for events and for nighttime scenarios with those beautiful light effects as well. Uh, I feel that it's actually better close up than far away. That's one idea. We have camels which are ready to sleep. We have an excellent night mode which pulls everything to the light. But also a tendency to increase the size of the halos every once in a while. Not always, but every once in a while. It seems to prefer realism compared to just blowing up things and making things brighter. So it's playing the realism card here, like on this camel here, which is slightly reddish instead of making it white with the night mode. So yeah. That's something to remember when you're taking nighttime shots. I'm actually impressed by how well, how they express the emotions that the person was going through instead of just lighting up everything. Okay, so this has been photos. Now let's talk about the videos. Okay, so we mentioned video. Let's start talking about the video. We have actually two vids here. Both are full HD taken with the selfie camera. And as you can see, we have quite a few clips. Fireworks, nighttime, going through Morocco. So, okay, when it comes to the selfie videos, things are like this. Definitely good enough for TikTok, good enough for YouTube Shorts and the likes. Natural color, good focus, plenty of details. However, if there's a lot of sun behind you, you may encounter some problems. Now, when it comes to stabilization, let's see what happens here. So we're working in the park and things are quite fine on a low resolution with a steady mode. And by the way, the colors are pretty natural on account of the whole Pantone thing. Let's actually see some more colors here. Once again, the comparison with Hasselblad and OnePlus comes to mind. We don't have a collab with a camera brand here, but you can definitely tell there's been some pretty solid calibration. Okay, so this is from the balloon. It's quite impressive. I mean, the zoom doesn't exactly blow me away because it's just 3x optical zoom, but it's, I would say, good enough. That's the idea, good enough. You can definitely notice that the clarity changes between different levels, different thresholds of zoom. Now, okay, so stabilization is fine, details are fine and colors are fine. So what's to object here? Well, nothing. The only thing to object is that we made quite a few Full HD videos and uh, we should have focused on maybe 4K. This one is 4K with more details and definitely feels and looks like a flagship. This is Bucharest, by the way, and if you want Marrakesh, we also have that. But we have more nighttime scenarios rather than daytime ones. So also plenty of Full HD. This one, for example, we're working through the square. I'm quite happy with what was achieved. Lots of moving subjects, lots of, well, supposed problems, but things are quite excellent in uh, this Full HD capture. Okay, if we switch to the night time, things are all the more impressive like this. There are some limitations. You can see there's a bit of color fringing here and a bit of shakiness in the colorful area. So intense lights may cause some problems, some troubles here if there are multiple light sources calibrated in different manners. 
this is a bit of a shakiness when it comes to exposure and uh, white balance. So yes, it does show its limitations during the night, but let's see some uh, traditions here in Morocco. The fire field feels a bit like a dune scene. It's also a bit ghostly and losing details when you zoom in. And uh, I promised you one with fireworks, if I'm not mistaken, there definitely was one here. That's pretty impressive, but once again, intense lights may spoil the fun and cause, cause some ghostiness. Okay, time to talk about other things, like for example, um, connectivity. Okay, so we're dealing here with a 5G phone, obviously, and by the way, Motorola invented the phones, so yeah, it has all the cool connectivity features. Okay, so there's also a Wi-Fi 6E tri-band, Bluetooth 5.4, and at the same time, we also get um, Bluetooth A2DP, Bluetooth Low Energy, plus uh, positioning via GPS, GLONASS, Galileo, BDS, QZSS, and NAVIC. Uh, there's also NFC here, by the way, and uh, of course USB-C 3.1 port at the bottom side. And it has OTG and DisplayPort 1.4 functionality. Um, from what I understood, uh, there should also be an infrared emitter, but I'm not very sure about it because I don't see one at the top side. Okay, so yeah, infrared appears on the list, but uh, I should probably mention that there's still Wi-Fi Direct, for example. And um, the calls are pretty loud and clear. Once again, this company invented phones, mobile phones, so it's to be expected. Okay, so when it comes to testing. Okay, when it comes to tests, we have some pretty impressive results here in 5G. We achieved uh, 553 mega per second in downloads and up to 120 mega per second in uploads, which I would say is quite fine. And uh, we'll be back with more Wi-Fi tests soon. Usually those should be in the 700 mega per second range. Now, the interface is brand new here, it's no longer my UX or as they call it before, it's uh, Hello UI. It's more visually friendly, has continuity features and there are 3 years of Android updates here. This is Android 14, pre-installed from the factory, looking a bit stock and it has security patches for March 2024. Okay, so first things first, the Moto Pack. There is the Moto area where you can customize the device's look with fonts, icon shapes, colors, lock screen, display text size, fingerprint animation and more. The fingerprint scanner in the screen is of the optical variety and it's quite accurate. Now these are the gestures. As before, you can use them to activate various features and Moto Secure will protect your digital life. Uh, you can learn more from here with a secure folder, lowdown protection and quite a few others. Network protection, phishing detection, auto lock, pin pad scramble, security and privacy. These are tips to learn to use your phone, learn what's in Android 14, essentials and camera. And then we have the display with a lock screen feature, customizable lock screen with clock faces, shortcuts and the likes, reminding me of iOS a little bit. Uh, safe reply, sleep mode notifications, media preview and more. Okay, now um, edge lighting is also part of the experience, making things look a bit cooler. Okay, if you pinch the screen, or rather if you keep it pressed, you're going to be treated to beautiful themes and a bunch of nice fonts. You can do some extra personalization from here. And of course, we should also see some widgets. Which aren't very 3D compared to the Samsung ones, but they're still quite fine. Now, if you want to um, create catchier looks, let's see here. So, we have a generative AI for wallpapers. Keep it pressed here. Go to the wallpaper section. Lock screen, home screen made with AI. You can capture a photo or select a photo. And will trigger a wallpaper made with AI. Let's maybe select this flower here. You can even load a photo of yourself. It will turn into a wallpaper. It takes quite a bit. Uh, so the AI usually generates um, a few shots if you upload a photo of yourself. So you can fit better. Wow, this is actually a nice one, to be honest. Inspired by a flower. This AI is quite cool. And you don't have to use words to generate it. Okay, so the customization is this one here. We have the leftmost home screen here with the news. We have this section here for the multitasking. And back to the Motorola area, we have Moto Secure, family space here. So if you're sharing the phone with your family, your little one or the elderly, you can create safe digital spaces for them with certain limitations. Aside from that, there are the games, which have their own customizations and features and settings. There is even a special toolkit which can be pulled from the side for extra tuning, even of performance. And then we have the Motorola Unplugged, which lets you, well, basically disconnect from the phone for a little while and change the 
scenery, find your balance, and just use the basic apps, the most basic apps. And finally, Ready4, which takes care of your productivity needs. This is Ready4, you can stream apps on your PC, you can be more productive and make better video calls using the phone's camera as a webcam. These are the other features, app streaming, mobile desktop, phone on PC, webcam, file transfer, hotspot, PC lock, smart clipboard and, well, cross control, which is actually a new one. You can use the PC mouse and keyboard to instantly control your phone, drag and drop and more. Okay, so those are the things you can do here. This is a dashboard, device gestures. This panel has evolved quite a bit from back in the day when uh, it was just starting up. Dashboard is available as well. Okay. Uh, Pre-installed apps, there aren't many of them, they're just basic packages. This is the Google package, this is the Moto package. I see there are some extra series like Device Help and the uh, Motorola Note here. Probably also Motorola Connect should be here from what I know. Let's just see. Family Space, yes, Motorola Connect is available as well. If you can connect to a TV set, smart TV, and uh, create various experiences, use the phone like a trackpad, do mirror cast, do mirroring and, well, even streaming. Aside from that, uh, I see we have uh, Adobe Scan for some reason here. There's Facebook, uh, there's LinkedIn, there's uh, Opera and, uh, well, settings. Not many bloater things pre-installed. And I think it's time for the verdict. Okay, so it's verdict time for this handset here. On the pro side, it's a beautiful looking premium phone, even though it's a high mid ranger. It's got very good looking uh, versions in this color and not only this one. It has a curved, sexy design. It's one of the lightest high performing phones on the market. It's got a brightness boost compared to the predecessor and the 144Hz definitely help for gaming. The performance is well sustained and the configs are actually quite appealing with the half a terabyte and all that RAM. Very fast charging, 125 watts and a bundled charger. The camera is above expectations in most areas. If you look at it as a T version, it competes with the Xiaomi T and the OnePlus Ts. The selfie camera has autofocus and a lot of details. Apparently it's also IP certified, although I wasn't sure when this review started up. And it has a 50 watt wireless charging. Those are the pros. When the cons hit, uh, I'm going to definitely mention the fact that we are lacking a micro SD card slot. We're also having a rather large price at the debut. The processor has been downgraded and performance as well from the H40 Pro. The AI features are limited and the storage is a bit slower, UFS 2.2 compared to 4.0. We're at the end of the review and this is a high mid-range phone which is priced closer to a flagship. Um, the price should drop fast, I hope, uh, before the summer hits. This is definitely a summer phone. I've tested it in the desert, it created some beautiful scenarios. The upgrades are visible compared to the Motorola H40 Pro, except for performance. The screen is brighter, the camera has definitely been upgraded. It's trendier and more fashionable than the Motorola H40 Pro. However, um, if you want more performance, you should maybe wait for the Ultra. I'm expecting more performance and more zoom. At the same time, I should also say that Pantone doesn't only mean colors of the phone now, but also calibration of the colors for the camera and uh, for the screen from here. So yeah, if you want natural colors, truly natural, this may be a rival for OnePlus at last. But the price should definitely drop a bit and it's not exactly a gaming phone uh, compared to other models from last year. And also maybe wait for the Ultra if you want the zoom, but if you want close-ups and beautiful scenarios at night, this may be just it. Motorlight 50 Pro, this has been the review from gsm.com. Goodbye.